Thank you all for joining us for the applying for graduate college scholarships workshop. Joining us today is Ashlyn Gray, who is Associate Director of Graduate Financial Services. She's going to discuss what graduate college scholarships are available, their requirements, and how to make your application stand out. I'm going to hand it over to her to get us started. Awesome. Thank you. All right. I'm going to share my screen right away. Okay, hi everyone, my name is Ashlyn Gray, and I'm actually now the Director of Graduate Financial Services. Um, and I will be presenting today on how to apply and really giving an overview of the Graduate College Scholarships and Fellowships. There are a lot of funding opportunities on campus, uh, but today I'm only gonna specifically talk about the graduate college funding um, and our scholarship process. I just wanted to note that there may be different processes on campus. Um, and so just make sure when you are applying for funding to really read through the requirements um, so that you know what you're applying for, but also what's being asked of you. So everything I'm gonna talk about here, some of it uh, can apply to other scholarships or fellowships, but generally this is going to um, be tailored to the graduate college's uh, list of scholarships and fellowships. So let's get started. If you have questions along the way, you can um, pop them into the chat. I have my GA uh, AC on the line and she's able to just answer questions right away for you uh, so it doesn't interrupt the presentation or you can hold them to the end and we can um, discuss them as a group. So, um, as Ege in introduced me, I am the Director of Graduate Financial Services here at the Grad College. I've worked here at the Grad College for seven years now um, in a few different capacities, but um, you, you may know me uh, as running the Graduate Assistantship Program uh, for the last four years. So the session objectives for um, today's workshop are to familiarize yourself with the various Graduate College scholarships, to find out which scholarships and fellowships you are interested in and are eligible to apply for, learn about all requirements to apply, and to obtain any tips on how to make your application stand out. So let's just get into it. So the scholarships and fellowships that are awarded by the Graduate College every year are listed on our website. If you are a new student, um, which I'm, I'm gonna assume all of you are already in the graduate college, but if there are any new students watching this, um, there are separate pages, uh, separate funding pages for new and current students. So if you take a look, this is the funding list for new students, but I'm gonna go on to the next one. And this is actually uh, the funding list for current students. So it's much bigger than the one for new students. Uh, and a lot of the awards that we do give out here are awarded to students who are already uh, enrolled. A lot of that is because we rely on your GPA um, as a part of the rubric when evaluating your scholarship or fellowship application. Um, and so, we actually review after the fall semester grades are posted. Um, so this fall right now, the classes that you're in, um, that is the GPA. Um, once those grades are posted, that will uh, accompany your scholarship application. FAFSA for all. So if you don't know, uh, the FAFSA is available to all domestic students. Um, the FAFSA for the next upcoming school year becomes available on October 1st. Um, October 1st is what I would call the priority deadline for FAFSA. Um, you obviously can fill it out after October 1st, um, but the earlier you get it in, the um, more of, like funding you could be eligible for. Um, some awards on campus that are not through a scholarship or fellowship process, um, may uh, rely on this form being submitted on a certain date um, in order to give out essentially free funding. So make sure to get that in. Um, it is not necessarily something we're going to check when uh, you submit your application, but when we award the actual uh, funding to a student, we do check at that point. Uh, the FAFSA is available um, every year to all students uh, that are domestic. If you are an international student, uh, the university has what they call an alternate need form. And that alternate 
uh, need determination form can be filled out through the financial aid website and submitted through their online portal, and it acts the same as the FAFSA would. Yes, uh, you would need this for any scholarships or fellowships. Um, so if you go through the requirements on the website, it will show you which ones you actually need it for. Um, but I really recommend filling it out for every um, every funding season or every season uh, that you plan on being a student. So knowing the difference. So here today, we're going to talk about two different things. We're going to talk about scholarships and fellowships. And so I just wanted to give a quick overview on the difference between the two. Um, so when we get into the nitty gritty, you have some understanding of um, kind of the basis for each and how they're different. So for scholarships, scholarships are awarded based on merit, financial need, uh, or other qualifying requirements, um, such as uh, being tailored to specific demographics or communities. Um, awards, scholarships are usually awarded um, in small amounts. Um, so you'll see all of the scholarships that we have listed are under $5,000. Um, and these scholarships do not need to be repaid in any way. Um, typically, uh, they will go along with the application. Um, once you submit your application and uh, the committee reviews your um, what you've submitted, scholarships are set up to help enhance the financial packages that you probably already are receiving. Um, so if you are receiving loans or any other form of financial aid, a scholarship usually um, is tacked onto that in order to just enhance or support the, the program that you're in. Fellowships, on the other hand, are commonly awarded to doctoral students. Uh, all the fellowships that we have listed um, are for doctoral students only. Uh, fellowships are highly competitive. There are a lot less fellowships than there are scholarships. Even within the scholarships that the grad college has listed, um, for example, here we have a list of all our scholarships and uh, the Patricia Sastanak scholarship is one that is listed here. However, we give about 50 of those out every year. Um, so it, it may look like these are the um, only scholarships that we give out, but we actually give out multiple awards under each scholarship depending on the requirements. So for fellowships, um, like I said, there are a lot less of them and they are highly competitive. Each fellowship usually awards one to two um, awards each year. Uh, they generally cover the cost of attendance plus a stipend. Um, so for scholarships in the smaller amounts, less than $5,000, you will usually just see that amount um, that is given on the, on the scholarship letter. For fellowships, uh, read into them more a little more closely because a lot of them offer a stipend plus uh, tuition and fee coverage or health insurance coverage. And fellowships also focus on research without working. Um, so the, the main purpose of fellowships are for graduate students to be able to give all of their focus to the research that they're working on um, and to you know, release the burden of having to get a part or full-time job. You um, cannot have a graduate assistantship at the same time as you are awarded a fellowship. Um, a scholarship, on the other hand, yes, you can have um, any other job, a graduate assistantship position, and still receive a scholarship. So fellowships are a little different that um, it is a much larger sum of money in order for you to focus on research without having to work. And all scholarships and fellowships are open to all students. Uh, regardless of immigration status. And that is all scholarships and fellowships offered through the graduate college. So graduate college scholarships and, scholarships and fellowships are targeted to all UNLV grad students. Now, the only caveat here is that you have to be an admitted student. Uh, if you are non-degree seeking or in a certificate program, you will not be eligible for the scholarships or fellowships that I'm about to talk about right now but there are other funding sources on campus that you can access. 
Um, scholarships that we offer range from $490 up to $2,500. And the fellowships that we have offered uh, range from $7,000 all the way up to $30,000. Um, and most are awarded for two semesters, uh, unless it's otherwise specified, such as summer specific awards. And then um, you also, to be eligible for all the awards, must remain in good standing in your program. So being, uh, if you find yourself on probation um, or um, are asking for extensions or have your GPA a little lower than you would want it, um, we would ask, you know, take that into consideration um, when we are reviewing the applications. Um, so once we get to recommenders, I'll go over that a little bit more, but um, we do wanna um, make sure that you are in good standing. Here is a list of the graduate college scholarships. So um, we've laid them out here uh, in a few different ways uh, for you to see maybe what you are eligible for. So we have scholarships for everyone. Um, so the five scholarships listed here uh, are pretty general and open to everyone. Um, and like I said, even though there, there's one scholarship name listed here, that doesn't mean there's necessarily only one student going to be selected. Um, most of them have multiple awards uh, within. So for the Patricia Sustanek scholarship, everyone that is awarded will receive the $2,500. Um, and like I said earlier, that one, um, you, we usually award somewhere between 40 and 50 students for just that, that scholarship. Um, another one I want to point out is the Summer Session Scholarship, and I want to point that out here because that is only going to be available for students that are enrolled in one credit during the summer. So if you're in a program where you um, don't take summer classes or, you know, you have other plans for the summer, uh, know that you do have to enroll in order to get that Summer Session Scholarship in at least one credit. We have um, other scholarships that are more specific uh, to either a program or um, a community. Uh, so we have one here that's for physics and astronomy, chemistry or geoscience students only. We have an alumni scholarship that's available for students that receive their undergrad degree from UNLV. We have uh, an American Indian Native American student award, the Dreamcatcher Scholarship. We have two awards that are available for only master's students to apply, uh, the James F. Adams GPSA Scholarship and the Dr. Lonnie and Sherry Wright Scholarship. We have the PhD uh, and UNLV master's graduate student uh, scholarship. So the Sterling Scholarship is um, for students that are currently in their PhD program uh, and received a master's degree from UNLV uh, previously. So that one is more specific. And then down here we have um, the Tina, sorry, <laughs> Tina Kunzer, Kunzer Murphy Scholarship for $1,000 that's given to um, a woman athlete that got their undergrad here at UNLV. So the scholarships that we have here um, are ones that have been endowed specifically by folks um, for the populations that they would like the scholarship to go to. So when you're on the website and you're reviewing all of the or all of the application requirements, each scholarship actually pops down um, and like unveils uh, all the details regarding that scholarship. So everything that's required of you to apply or would make you eligible, as well as um, all the materials that need to be submitted for that specific scholarship. So here is a list of the graduate college fellowships. And like we talked about when we were comparing scholarships to fellowships, the fellowships are available to graduate um, doctoral students only. Um, so the intent of a fellowship is for the student to focus on their research uh, and to not have the burden of a um, job to go to. Um, so it, they are much smaller amounts. And obviously this is not, um, you know, a livable wage that is intended um, to 
you know, probably support your whole lifestyle, but definitely to support your academic goals um, and to make sure that you don't have tuition and fee costs uh, that, you know, could burden you um, and also elongate your program. So the Barrett Graduate Fellowship is a $15 $15,000 stipend uh, that's given over two semesters. And in anyone that is awarded the Barrick Graduate Fellowship does receive health insurance and full tuition and fees for up to nine credits in addition to the 15,000. Um, so that can be anywhere around seven to $10,000 additional um, when, you are, when we're talking about the health insurance and full tuition and fees up to nine credits. Uh, and that's nine credits per semester. The President's UNLV Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship is uh, a $25,000 package. Um, and this award, you, you actually apply for it, but then we take all those applications, um, separate them by department, and then we ask for a nomination from the department. Um, based on the students that applied. Uh, I really recommend that if you are eligible for this one, um, you, you try and apply um, because there are not many students that apply thinking that um, they, the actual application is submitted by the department um, because it says nominated by, the, by a department, but that actually happens on our end in the review stage. And when it says $25,000 package, what that means is you will receive $25,000 for the academic year. Um, and so there will be no additional tuition and fee coverage provided through the fellowship. Um, but the $25,000 given will, um, a, like, at first it will be applied to the balance that you have in my UNLV, and then you will get a refund for the remaining amount. So depending on how many credits you're in, most doctoral students are in six credits. Um, so if they um, are enrolled in six credits for the semester, uh, the 25,000 will uh, apply to that balance, uh, and then they will receive a refund, hopefully within the first couple weeks of school, of the remaining amount. We have the Summer Doctoral Fellowship. Uh, so that is a $7,000 fellowship that is awarded in the summer. Uh, so all other fellowships and scholarships besides the two that are summer, so the Summer Doctoral Fellowship and also the Summer Session Scholarship, every all the other awards will uh, begin fall 2023. So uh, the summer ones will be applied summer 2023. And so um, those are the earliest ones that we want to get out and awarded uh, as soon as possible. Um, but that does not change our funding cycle uh, deadline because of the time frame of the, the fellowship. So when uh, you are in, if you do receive the Summer Doctoral Fellowship, you will need to enroll in one credit. Uh, and much like the scholarships we have, we actually give out multiple Summer Doctoral Fellowships. The UNLV Foundation Board of Trustees Fellowship, this is a $30,000 award. Um, it is a $30,000 package, so there are not um, tuition and fees and health insurance uh, in addition to that, um, but you do receive that for four consecutive semesters. Uh, so if you are awarded uh, in fall 2023, you will also receive the same award in fall 2024. Actually, I, I misspoke a second ago where I said that you would not receive tuition and fees and health insurance. And I did want to say that all fellowship recipients do have the option of receiving the student health insurance. And that is something we will waive for them. Um, so that is a, a benefit of being a fellowship recipient is that um, you not only receive out of state tuition is waived, but also your health insurance is waived. And finally, a new award that um, just is beginning this year, which is the Robert E. Lang Memorial Fellowship. Uh, and all the details for this fellowship are listed on our website. Um, and I just wanted to point out that this fellowship does have some specific requirements, um, attending uh, some uh, conferences, presenting on things. Um, so make sure you read through all those requirements before you um, before you submit your application and make sure that you can uh, fulfill all those requirements uh, and because for that one they are very specific.
And I had a few that I wanted to highlight that I didn't include on the other two slides. So these are some special funding that may be available. We still consider it scholarships and fellowships, um, but they are a little different uh, or maybe have some special requirements. So I just wanted to point those out to you. The UNLV Graduate Access Child Care Scholarship. This is one that I think not enough people know about. So if you um, are a current graduate student with child dependence and you actually have to pay for professional daycare or child care in order to attend graduate school and pursue your graduate research, you can apply for this child care scholarship. The child care scholarship is open all year round. Um, we do have seasons where we um, review and award this scholarship, but I believe that the scholarship is always available to you in Grad Rebel Gateway for you to apply. The, a couple things to note about this scholarship is that um, we do require a tax ID number from your child care provider. Um, so if you have family members watching uh, your children or, um, you know, have the support of friends on that, um, you would not be eligible for this. We do require the tax ID um, from a professional daycare or child care provider. And we also require the receipts, or if you only have an invoice um, for your child care, that also must be submitted. And so the reason why the range for the scholarship is $150, um, is $150 to $2,500, is because dependent on your costs, that is how we will reimburse you um, or award the scholarship. Um, so if you um, your awards total up to over 2,500, you will receive that max um, if you are awarded. Um, but we have the range because there's some folks that feel like maybe if they don't spend 2,500 on uh, their childcare expenses, that they cannot apply, and that is not the case. If you spend any amount um, of money on a childcare provider while you're in school, you are eligible for this award. Another one is the Dr. Greg Shaw Scholarship, and so this one is very specific, so I wanted to pull it out of the, the list. Um, so this is an, a scholarship that's awarded to doctoral students in a specific program. Um, so all the programs that are eligible are listed on our website, um, and then you must be a doctoral student in any of those programs and on top of that, also be an alumni of the Center for Academic Enrichment and Outreach Programs. So the center has multiple programs and uh, Gear Up, Trio, uh, McNair Scholars, NSF Alliance. If, you're, uh, if you were a part of any of those programs as an undergrad, um, you are eligible for this award. And then the final one I have on the special funding available is the School of Public Policy and Leadership Travel Award. So this award goes through our system as well, um, but you must be a doctoral student in public affairs program or a master's student in the public administration program. So you'll see all the awards listed, uh, the ones that we just went over as well as there may be more on there that we um, didn't get to or didn't get to highlight. So make sure that you go through all of them and see what is available to you. Ashley, so yeah. I just have a question. Sure. Um, someone is asking for the Sterling Scholarship, mm -hmm. are only PhD students eligible or can other doctoral students, such as those pursuing a doctorate in physical therapy, DPT, rather than a PhD in physical therapy apply? So, yes, so it's going to be all doctoral students. So, whether it's so doctoral level. Um, so, any, so yes, if you are in the physical therapy program, yes, you are eligible. You do, I just looked it up and I just want to make sure that, you know, there's specific um, requirements for each, but for the Sterling Scholarship specifically, um, if you are pursuing a doctoral degree and must have completed at least one year of your degree program already. So um, if you are new to a graduate program, you would not be uh, eligible for this award. Um, but if you are in your second year or have already completed um, 
actually, if you are right now completing your first year, uh, then you would be eligible um, as long as you have graduated with either a bachelor's or master's degree from UNLV. And that's for Sterling specific. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yep. They're also nuanced. Um, it's like hard to know exactly all of the requirements for each of them. So I really recommend that you go, if you are looking for funding, that you go through each of them to really check to see what you are eligible for. Um, I don't want you to think, because I mentioned something here, um, that you are totally not eligible. When in doubt, assume you are and go through the process because we'll let you know if you're not. Hi, Ashley. Uh, my name is Cecilia Turman, and I'm do a do doctoral student from UNLV, and I graduated um, in two masters from UNLV. Is this scholarship just for um, health students? I mean, um, students in the health uh, or medical field? No, it is not. It is open to all students or to students in all doctoral programs. Is there one you're talking about specifically, or are we still talking about the Sterling Scholarship? Uh, I was asking about the Sterling Scholarship. Okay, yes. yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. So where 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 is this application? Where does it live and how do you apply? Um, so the applications for scholarships and fellowships through the, through the Graduate College are all available in Grad Rebel Gateway. Once you log, it, log into Grad Rebel Gateway, um, which is the same system that you applied for admissions through and that you submit um, all your documents and um, forms and everything, um, it's going to be that same, same website. And once you get to the page, you're going to click on scholarships and fellowships. We've highlighted it here for you, and that's where you're going to apply. There's going to be a big red button in the middle that says to apply. Um, and then um, once you go in there, um, you'll be able to see a list of scholarships or fellowships that you are eligible for. So the scholarship portal opens on October 1st, so you will not see available, like a full list of available scholarships before October 1st. So if you go in there now, you might not see anything except for maybe the child care scholarship. Um, but after October 1st, everything will be updated and you will have access to all the scholarships or fellowships that you are eligible for. Some things to note, um, uh, if you have trouble accessing uh, these applications, the first thing that I tell students is to check your admissions tab to make sure you have the correct application as active. So that's gonna be this admissions tab right here that you're gonna click on. And if for any reason you've submitted multiple applications for admission, I know, um, uh, back in the day of graduate assistantship applications, um, when students were told to submit those, uh, they thought that they had to submit an application or an admissions application as well. And so you may have more than one admissions application. If that is the case, um, you will need to make sure the correct one, so the one that you're active and matriculated in at the time that you are applying is selected as active. If for some reason it's not selected as as active, you would just click on it, um, the actual link of the program, and it would then make it active. Also, if there are scholarships or fellowships that are not showing up uh, on your page, you may not be eligible for them. Um, so, like I said, going over the requirements here, kind of having an idea of all the things that you want to apply for, um, but when this, the scholarship and fellowships app applications open, um, you may not see something there if you are not eligible for it. So if you have any concerns about that, please reach out to us. Um, we can look into that a little further and see maybe why certain ones aren't popping up or if we need to um, adjust your statuses in any way within Grad Rebel Gateway. And another thing is that um, a letter of, so just so you know, the letter of recommendation is not required from you at the time that you submit your application. It is required that you uh, provide a recommender who will then submit a letter, but that's not something you have to go collect on your own and have ready at the time that you submit your application. Um, that will go to a recommender, so you do just have to provide an email address to us for that.
So just wanted to let you know before you get started that um, these are some things that can come up when you're looking to apply and starting your application process. The Graduate College Scholarships and Fellow Fellowships application uh, materials and guidelines. So um, materials uh, that you need to submit are the Grad Rebel Gateway application, which we talked about. It'll be like the initial, some of the information on the application will auto-populate uh, your NCID, your name, that sort of stuff automatically goes in. Um, so you'll have to update any other information on that application. We ask that you submit the most up-to-date CV a letter of intent or a statement of purpose, and then a recommendation provider. These are, this is essentially the four materials that you need for each scholarship. There are a few that sometimes ask for transcripts, um, unofficial transcripts. Um, I think the one that we have right now is the Robert E. Lang. Um, so we're working on a way for you to be able to upload that there. Um, but if not, because it's attached to Grad Rebel Gateway, um, your transcripts are available in our system already, so we can connect them to the committee. Um, so just follow the directions that are there. And also when you're in Grad Re Rebel Gateway submitting your application, submit everything that it's asking for in the system as well. Some guidelines um, for the upcoming uh, season uh, are that awards, all the awards that are listed are gonna be available for 2023, 2024. Right now we don't, the Graduate College does not have any scholarships available for this fall or this spring. Those have already been art given out um, and uh, been secured by students. And so now we're going to talk about funding for the next upcoming year. Also, a guideline of these fellowships, scholarships and fellowships, is that you're enrolled in a minimum of six graduate level credits unless stated. Like we talked about the summer doctoral research fellowship where you only have to be in one credit. Um, and there are some that um, fellowships, for example, that do say that we require a minimum of six credits. However, if you are in your final semester and you or your final year and you only need three credits to enroll, that is an exception that we're willing to consider and work with you on uh, because we don't want you to um, be penalized uh, for getting everything in and getting completed on time. And then uh, another guideline to know about all the scholarships and fellowships is that the funding will be split between fall and spring. So if it is a $2,500 award, that will be split in half and you will get one half uh, at the beginning of the fall semester and one half at the beginning of the spring semester. Uh, that is also the same for the fellowships and the larger amounts. So if you receive a fellowship that is $30,000, uh, a $30,000 package, that will be split in half and you'll receive $15,000 in fall and 15 in spring. There is no way to get all of the funding in one semester. Um, so unless there's um, an extenuating circumstance um, that will need to be considered by the graduate college dean. Uh, all funding will be split between the fall and spring semesters, except for summer, which will obviously be awarded in summer. A thing to know about summer scholarships um, is that, and fellowships and just funding in general, summer is broken up into three sessions. So depending on what you're, when you're enrolled, that's when your funding will actually disperse. So if you are enrolled in summer session two and you are getting the summer doctoral uh, research fellowship, that fellowship will not disperse for you until the Friday before uh, summer session two. So some students will go in and they will have received, you know, even the summer session scholarship um, and be looking for it at the beginning of summer, right after spring has ended. Uh, so in the middle of May sometime. But if your uh, summer session that you're actually enrolled in is two or three, it will um, disperse closer to those um, terms. That's something I just learned this year. So wanted to share that. So when we're talking about the materials, I'm gonna go uh, in depth uh, through a couple of the materials required, uh, just to give you a, another idea about how to submit these, what we're looking for, um, and you know how, how to kind of set up the process for yourself. So who should you choose to write a letter of recommendation? 
This is going to be a person that knows you. You want to reach out to a faculty member um, who knows, who understands your goals um, and, you know, your, your plan of study. Uh, someone that can emphasize your characteristics as a person and a student. Um, someone that you actually know. Uh, sometimes we will have students just put the grad coordinator email down or um, some faculty member that they found from uh, their website. Um, and we do ask that you know actually connect with that recommendation provider. Uh, I saw someone ask if they do have to be UNLV faculty. Yes, they do. Uh, so it does have to be a UNLV va faculty member. So it is September 15th. So if you haven't met any of your faculty members uh, or don't know who would write a letter of recommendation from you, now is your um, spark to get started on that uh, and start connecting with uh, faculty members in your program uh, in order to get a strong letter written for you. How does your recommender submit the letter? So after you have submit, after you have submitted the application um, and listed a recommendation provider on your application, that person will receive a link where they will submit their letter of recommendation for you. So you have the option, if you're applying for multiple scholarships, you have the option to select more than one provider for your scholarship. So let me say that a different way. You're able to provide one recommender per scholarship, or you can choose the same person for all the scholarships and fellowships that you are submitting for. It is important to know that if you choose one person, um, so say I choose uh, Dr. Ahmad from Civil Engineering as my recommendation provider uh, for all my scholarships, he is gonna only receive one link to submit one letter of recommendation for me. Um, if you select multiple people, each of those folks will receive a link uh, to submit your recommendation. So that kind of gets a little tricky. Um, so recommenders can always reach out to Grad Financial Services and email us directly the letter if they aren't able to get the link. We can resend the link if we need to, so you all can just reach out to us or the faculty member can reach out and we can just resend that link if they need, um, but that is where they will upload the letter. Letters of recommendation are not due until December 15th, so uh, your all your applications are due on December 1st. That's when actually the portal closes, but then faculty members have, you know, the next 15 days to get the letter of recommendation in. So if you don't have uh, the, you know, a letter of recommendation as of December 1st, don't worry. We will still allow recommenders to submit up until December 15th. When should you contact your recommendation provider? As soon as possible, today. <laughs> Let the recommender know the requirements of the specific scholarships or fellowships you are applying for. If it is necessary to set up a meeting with the uh, recommender to go over your CV, to talk about your plans for the future, um, and, and to officially ask them if they are comfortable writing a letter for you that is not generic. A lot of times, let me tell you, we get so many letters of recommendation um, that are the same. Super generic, um, I recommend this student for this award. Um, so it's really helpful, and you'll see in a minute, we'll go over kind of how your application is reviewed. And you'll see that um, the letter of recommendation um, does have specific uh, a specific rubric around what it's looking for. Um, and so it's really helpful to also talk with your recommendation provider about um, not only the requirements of the scholarship, but also the rubric and what's being asked for. Um, and so you guys know how to kind of tailor that letter of recommendation. Any questions about that? Besides the letter of recommendation, the biggest part that's actually going to come from you and can you can also get started on it right now is the statement of purpose or your letter of intent um, each scholarship kind of calls it something different so for this purpose i'm calling it statement of purpose um, and so make sure when you uh, are writing your statement of purpose that you're following the instructions 
uh, the there is a maximum two to three page double spaced for your submission of your statement of purpose. So uh, please do not go over that maximum. Please proofread, then proofread again. This is a huge one that the committee actually asked me to emphasize here. Um, is that please have someone, if you can, read over your statement of purpose, multiple people, check, you can go to the writing center and work with them, any resources on campus or any way um, to make sure that you are checking your punctuation and grammar and all of that, which may seem really small, uh, but we receive applications all the time where the statement of purpose is not proofread at all. So make sure that you're doing that. Also, the statements may be tailored to a specific scholarship or fellowship um, based on the details or requirements of that um, scholarship or fellowship. Right down here below, I put the uh, just the rubric that is used specifically for the statement of purpose. So you can see how the committee is going to review this. So when they're looking at it, um, they're giving these scores based on what you've submitted. So in order to get between an eight and a 10 uh, for your statement of purpose, which is the highest score you can get, you need to make sure it's clear, it's detailed, it's actually feasible of something you can do. Uh, it makes an impact and addresses the specifics of the scholarship. So if you, if you can um, really uh, make your statement of purpose um, tailored and specific to the scholarship that you're applying for, uh, it is really helpful when the committee's reviewing it to really understand how you're going to use those funds. Ashley, I have a question about the recommender. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to be a faculty from UNLV. It has to be a faculty from the same department or different department. And also about the rank of the faculty in the department, uh, like a full professor. Great question. Actually, it can be any faculty member. So it does not have to be someone from your program. Um, you know, we have a lot of interdisciplinary programs going on here and a lot of interdisciplinary projects happening. And so your work may cross over into other areas. Uh, so we allow you to submit any recommender um, that, that you choose on campus. Also, the level of uh, the faculty member does not matter to the committee or to us when you're submitting it. As long as the recommender can really speak to um, your need uh, and why you would be a good fit for this funding, that's all they're really looking for. They're not looking to see if, um, you know, some students receive letters of recommendation from a dean uh, versus uh, an associate professor. That's not something that the committee is considering. So feel free to work with whoever makes you feel most comfortable. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so I do have here, um, and I think if you all are not receiving all of this information, uh, this actual PowerPoint after, um, go ahead and just search, if you just Google UNLV graduate application rubric, it will take you to a full list. So let's see if I can pop this out. Okay, so this is actually rubric that the committee uses when reviewing all scholarships and fellowships. So this is available on our website. So just wanted to let you know here, it does go over every area. So even though I only showed you the statement of purpose uh, rubric on the PowerPoint, um, our posted PDF actually goes over every area. So all every area, meaning the required materials. So also the CV, your letter of recommendation, exact specifically what they're looking for, professionalism of the documents you have submitted, your GPA, as I mentioned, and for um, doctoral uh, scholarships and actually for the summer doctoral fellowship, they're looking at time to completion and where you at are at in your doctoral program. And then the final um, criteria that the committee will be reviewing on is it, that you have demonstrated need. Okay, so all up. So any applications that are incomplete and do not follow the requirements will not be considered. So make sure that you're paying attention to page limits um, and format of your statement of purpose and any forms that you're uh, submitting for consideration. 
uh, the review of your entire application is based on your statement of purpose, your CV, your recommendation, professionalism of documents, your deep GPA, and uh, that you've demonstrated a need. Okay, so here we're coming to the end, and here is your application timeline. So I wanted to let you um, kind of see what to expect when um, you're thinking about applying for these scholarships. So today, I would say go review the Graduate College Scholarship and Fellowship fellowship website uh, and see what you are, you're eligible for. Kind of get an idea with what uh, scholarships and fellowships you are gonna apply for this season. Tomorrow, you can connect with your recommendation provider, talk to them about, uh, about the scholarships or fellowships you're interested in, uh, and if they would be comfortable submitting a letter of recommendation for you once the portal opens. Next week, you can start be um, you can begin collecting application materials, updating your CV for this academic year, uh, making sure you have uh, all the conferences you presented on, all the papers um, or research you are assisting with is included in your CV. And then Octo on October first, you can submit your FAFSA, as well as begin applying for all eligible scholarships and fellowships. So the um, portal uh, for scholarships through the grad college is open October 1st and closes December 1st every academic year. Then on November 30th, I suggest that you check to make sure all applications are submitted. Uh, it, it is midnight on December 1st when uh, the portal actually closes. And then December 15th, <clears throat> excuse me, I meant 11.59 uh, on November 30th is when uh, it closes. Um, and then uh, December 15th is when the letter of recommendation is due from your faculty member. And then over winter break, that is when all the applications are reviewed for minimum qualifications. So we do wait until fall grades are posted uh, to review your applications. Um, so that's what's happening all winter break. So this is kind of what the application timeline looks like for you um, when reviewing and also submitting your applications. Once uh, it is after winter break and all, after all the applications have been reviewed for minimum qualifications, then it goes over to the committee. The committee actually um, will review every single one that was submitted. Each year we have about 300 um, application and fellowship submissions. Uh, the committee is made up of academic faculty on campus. Sarah Jordan is the committee chair uh, from the Counseling and Family Therapy Department. And uh, the committee actually attends a training on how to review the applications and um, going over the rubric and making sure they fully understand what they're reviewing um, within the applications. The committee meets and discusses uh, and also provides feedback on the applications. And then they actually select the scholarship and fellowship winners. Uh, they provide that information to the grad college and then that's when we um, go ahead and start to send out decision letters. So the winners are actually announced in the spring semester around March or April. Uh, hopefully we can get it out in March this year. Uh, the earlier, the better I know. So as soon as the committee is done reviewing, I like to get uh, those decisions out as soon as possible. You will be notified in Grad Rebel Gateway if you are awarded. Um, you will be notified in Grad Rebel Gateway um, even if you uh, receive a regret letter and are not awarded a scholarship or fellowship for this term. All of that information will come through Grad Rebel Gateway under that scholarships and fellowships tab. Um, and then you will have to respond to the scholarship or fellowship offer if you are awarded. And then just a little housekeeping to know is that scholarships and fellowships are routed through financial aid and will show up on your award summary page. All awards are dispersed through financial aid 10 days before the first day of classes. And it, you need to make sure that you are enrolled in the required number of credits in order for the scholarship or fellowship to actually disperse to your account. 
So if you don't receive your award or you don't see a decision on your account um, around April, please let me know. Uh, please contact us at Grad Financial Services and we'll make sure that uh, financial aid has the most up-to-date information um, and that uh, you also receive all the answers you need regarding your scholarships and fellowships. Oh yeah, Ashlyn, going back to the yeah. dates, um, Alexandra asked, besides FAFSA, do these dates change each year? They do not. Okay. Actually, none of the dates change at all. So October 1st to December 1st every year is going to be our scholarship season. October 1st is going to always be when the FAFSA is due. Um, and then we will... <laughs> Some students who have been here for a while know it sometimes has taken us a long time to get awards um, out to students. So sometimes it'll happen in April and May, uh, but we're really trying to um, clean that up and just make sure that students have enough time to plan their funding for the upcoming year. So we, we hope to have those uh, awards announced in March. Thanks. I have included, thanks. I have included uh, in the PowerPoint some other funding ideas for you, um, other places where maybe you could get awards or start to look. Um, you can always work with us at the Graduate College, our Grad Financial Services team. AC and the other uh, folks on our team are really great and can help. We, we've been doing this a long time and we can help give you some ideas of other funding opportunities for you that are not uh, through the grad college. Um, and then uh, don't be afraid of funding. So like I said, if you aren't sure if you are eligible or not, go ahead and apply and we'll let you know. You can also reach out to us if you have questions about your specific um, circumstances and want to see if uh, you're eligible for a specific scholarship that we can look into directly for you. I also um, gave a bunch of links here um, that I usually pass out in my other presentations um, just about funding, financial aid, how to pay for grad school, just other resources that could be really helpful to you. And that is all I have for the presentation today. I just saw that there was one question regarding the alternate need form. So the alternate need form is submitted uh, through financial aid. Um, it asks very similar questions that the FAFSA asks, asks of you. Um, and so financial aid uses that form to get a full picture of what you might be able to pay uh, and it, ma it makes you el possibly eligible for other funding that is out there on campus um, and so it works exactly like the FAFSA and should be um, is available to all international students um, and in my opinion should be submitted by all international students if you are able. For the UNLV Graduate Access Child Care Scholarship, can those funds assist with paying for before school or after school? Yes, safe key, yes, it can. So as long as we have um, the information, um, oh, someone asked me that privately, but for everyone that's here, you can submit for safe key or any programs that you have your children in that you are paying for. Yes, please submit. There is another one, it says, um... Recommendation must come from UNLV faculty member. I think you said yes to that. Yes, it does. Yep, and then it does. another one, Ashton, is that do you think there are any scholarships for disability students? If there, uh, where do you think? So um, all of our scholarships that the graduate college have don't um, distinguish uh, if um, you have a disability or are or are able bodied. Um, but I would suggest we're going through the disability. Or, Disability Resource Center, they might have a list of specific funding opportunities um, that are available only uh, for students that use their resources. Uh, so that might be uh, an avenue that you can go through. But I know that all graduate college scholarships are available to all students and don't distinguish. Thank you so much. If you all have any, qu any more questions, I've included my um, contact information right down here. Feel free to reach out to me at any time. And like I said, scholarship applications are open October 1st. Um, so I encourage all of you to apply for as many as you're eligible for. So then before we end today's session, um, we would like to thank to our presenter for sharing their time and expertise with us today to 
Uh, thank our participants for joining us today too. Before we all log off, please take a few minutes to fill out the survey and it helps us a lot. I hope everyone has a great rest of the day and thank you. I just dropped the link. Ron, if you can put your email in um, the, if you want to put um, your email in the chat, or if you want to go ahead and uh, send me an email directly, I can connect you with the presentation. I'm not sure if it's mailed out or not, um, but if you would like it, go ahead and email me and I can make sure that uh, you get a copy. Okay. Oh, great. Nev said they can email it out to the entire group. So I'll make sure that she, um, that you all get a copy uh, today and then I'll have her email it out to everyone. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful afternoon. Have a nice day, everyone.